Hey guys, this is Peter with the Command Valley bringing you another Commander Deck Tech. Thank you to GameGrid for sponsoring this video. If you want to check out their new and improved store and support the channel while doing it, check out the link in the description below. We have a copy and pasteable deck list in the description that you can paste right into their deck builder and buy your singles there. If you want to support the channel directly, head on over to Patreon at patreon.com slash commandvalley to sign up today. Today I have brewed a new deck for a commander from Strixhaven, so we are starting out our Strixhaven deck techs with the commander Jadzi Oracle of Arcavios. Jadzi has two sides. I will talk about the back side first, Journey to the Oracle. It is a sorcery for two and two green. And it says you may put any number of land cards from your hand onto the battlefield. Then if you control eight or more lands, you may discard a card. If you do, return Journey to the Oracle to its owner's hand. Then on the front side is Jadzi, who is a legendary creature human wizard for six and two blue. She's a five five and has two abilities. The first one lets you discard a card and return Jadzi to its owner's hand. The second one is a magecraft ability, which means whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell, reveal the top card of your library. If it's a non-land card, you may cast it by paying one instead of paying its mana cost. If it's a land card, put it onto the battlefield. So we have two very important sides to this commander, and you can see that that hefty cost up in the corner of eight on Jadzi is pretty big and not really something desirable to have in a command zone because we want to be casting our commander pretty quickly. And getting up to eight, in my experience, is really, really difficult. I've played enough Jashath to know that. But this commander has an advantage where the backside of the card helps us get to casting the commander. And if we can get up to those eight lands at the time that we cast Journey to the Oracle, we can just discard a card and put Jadzi into our hand and then cast her the next turn for eight mana instead of paying 10 and letting it go back to the command zone. It's really easy to get Jadzi out for eight and keep her out because we're going to have a lot of things that let us draw cards. So we have a lot of fuel to discard cards and keep her alive. So that's all about getting Jadzi out. And the first couple of turns are all about that. Then once you do have Jadzi out, the whole game shifts over to casting as many instant and sorceries as you can and then we'll talk a bit about this later how we're going to win that way but eventually we're probably going to run out of cards in our library so let's get started first let's talk about our ramp and cost reduction so these are the things that are going to make it easier for us to cast instants and sorceries these are going to help us get lands onto the battlefield or they're just going to help accelerate us so that those first couple of turns we can get to our commander a lot more quickly. Starting out with our cost reduction, we have Baral Chief of Compliance, Curious Homunculus, Jace's Sanctum, and Primal Amulet. All of these will reduce the cost of our instants and sorcery spells by one. Curious Homunculus, you have to do a couple of extra steps, but that's totally fine. And Primal Amulet only gives us that cost reduction for a little bit before it turns over, and then we can use it as a land that copies our instants and sorceries, which will trigger Magecraft, which is really nice. The great thing about having that cost reduction is that when we cast instants and sorceries from the top of the library with Jadzi, that cost reduction applies to those cards and we can cast them for zero mana, which is fantastic and it accelerates our game way more quickly. Next we have Wood Elves and Solemn Simulacrum, a couple of creatures that enter the battlefield and get us land. This is just going to help us propel us along and they can help us kind of in the middle of us going through Jadzi loops to get more lands as well. We have a couple of mana rocks with Soul Ring, Arcane Signet, and Lotus Bloom. Lotus Bloom especially here is important because it can give us three extra mana, which can be crucial to getting to Jadzi if we don't have enough lands in our hand. And even if we do have to cast it later, we can cast it directly onto the battlefield and forego the whole suspend process, which is really, really nice to have. And the rest of these are instants and sorceries, and the reason why that's important is because we want to be casting a lot of instants and sorceries specifically to continue the chain of Jadzi. And so having these in our library and getting them off of the top, even in the mid game, will only help us propel our strategy a little bit further and potentially get us more lands to fuel Jadzi's ability as well. It's a self-perpetuating cycle. First we have Cultivate, Classic, get two lands, one on the battlefield, one into your hand. 
Next we have Farseek, which will get us a land onto the battlefield tapped, most likely an island because we don't have a lot of land options in this deck the way I've built it. Nature's Lore, which will get us an untapped forest onto the battlefield. Search for Tomorrow, which will get us a plan. And this has the same benefit that Lotus Bloom does, where we can forego the suspend cost if we cast it from the top of our library. Then we have Sylvan Scrying, which puts a land into our hand, which is not necessarily a bad thing if we're still in the phase of the game where we are casting Journey to the Oracle. And it also helps us get another card out of our deck, and that's really the goal of this deck, is to get as many cards out of our deck as we can. Similarly, Evolution Charm will do the same thing, put a land into our hand, and it has a couple of other modes if those are relevant. We also have Eureka Moment, which will draw us a couple cards and put a land from our hand onto the battlefield. Growth Spiral, draw us a card, put a land from our hand onto the battlefield. And these last two are important for our storm strategy. They're Turnabout and High Tide. Turnabout will untap all of our artifacts and lands, and High Tide will double all of the mana coming from our islands. So they're both really, really crucial to have in a storm deck, and if we can copy them, even better. Moving on, we're going into some cantrips and just general card draw. So these are going to be really nice to get off of the top of the library because one, we're casting an instant or a sorcery. All of these are instants or sorceries. And two, we get more cards into our hand so that we can potentially draw into another cantrip if we ever stop the chain or if we get like a storm card or something like that to help us continue going on the Jadzi chain for pretty minimal mana, just giving us more options. First, we have Abundant Harvest, the new card from Modern Horizons 2. This is going to help us dig for the next land or non-land card, and mostly it doesn't really matter what you search for. You're getting a card into your hand either way, and potentially non-land is going to be more helpful here because the chances of you hitting a spell that you can cast from your hand and trigger Jadzi again is really high. But if you need a land at that moment, can also be helpful. Next we have Compulsive Research. Draw three cards, discard two unless you discard a land card. The probability of you having extra land cards in your hand is very high, so this is really nice. Edge of Autumn is actually a land tutor, but most of the time you're not going to be able to do that, so usually you can cycle this away to get an extra card by sacrificing a land if it ends up in your hand. Otherwise, it's just another card for your storm count and another spell to trigger Jadzi. Next we have 4C, which will let us scry 4 and draw 2. Nice cantrip to cast for really cheap. Glimpse the Cosmos, same sort of deal. Look at the top three, get one from them into our hand and the rest on the bottom. Mentor's Guidance is really cool with Jadzi out because Jadzi is a wizard, so it copies itself, gets two activations off of Jadzi, and they're both just ops, so scry 1 and draw a card. Really, really nice. Next we have Ponder, which will help us kind of judge the next couple of cards that are coming for us and get another card off at the top, just so we can order them in a way that's preferable to us, or if they're really bad, we can shuffle our library and try again. Preordain lets us scry some and draw a card, classic cantrip. Strategic planning, same sort of deal, look at the top three, take one into your hand and put the rest in the graveyard. Curate, which is a new card, you look at the top two, you can put any number of them into the graveyard and put the rest on top of your library again, and then you draw a card. Dig through time, which looks really, really pricey. If it does end up in your hand, you can delve a whole bunch of these cards that we're discarding away to cast it, and it lets you grab two cards from the top seven of your library. Really, really powerful cantrip. Next we have Opt, very simply, one mana spell, scry one, draw one. Very nice. And then we have Frantic Search, which is really, really good in Storm decks, especially if you can find a way to copy it or return it to your hand. Let's you draw two cards, discard two cards, and then untap three lands. And this is also really nice if we aren't spending three to cast it, we get some mana back for that. And last we have Brainstorm, which lets us draw three cards and then put two cards from your hand on the top of the library in any order, which means you can take some of the high costing spells that ended up in your hand and put them on top of the library to cast with Jadzi. Very, very, very nice card to have. Next on the list is our recursion. So you may have noticed that we're discarding a lot of cards, we're casting a lot of instants and sorceries, and sometimes we just need something to get something back. A lot of the times this is actually really, really helpful to get just a cheap spell out of the graveyard so that you can cast it and continue going with Jadzi. So we've got Eternal Witness, of course, get any card back from the graveyard. Regrowth, same thing, get any card back from the graveyard into your hand. Mystic Sanctuary, one of our lands in the deck, most likely is going to come in tapped and you get an instant or sorcery onto the top of the library, which is so valuable for Jadzi loops, you have no idea 
how great it feels to put something back on the top of the library, like a storm card or something, after you've already had a crazy turn. Next is Aether Helix, which is a new card from Strixhaven, lets you return a permanent from the battlefield to its owner's hand, and a permanent from your graveyard to your hand. Most of the time you're actually not going to have a permanent in your graveyard, but if you do, this is going to be really nice when you do cast it. And if you don't have anything personally that you want to return from your battlefield, you can always target someone else's permanent. And this is really nice to cast for one mana, so. And then last we have Primal Command, which is kind of a reset button if we get in a real dire situation and don't have a lot of options for continuing to go through our deck. This can shuffle our graveyard back into our library, or we can use it to recast something like a Solemn Simulacrum or gain a whole bunch of life. It's just a really flexible spell. Or it can find us a Baral. Moving on, we're going to our interaction section, which is going to be mostly counterspells. And I did want to take a moment to talk about counterspells and Jadzi. Counterspells feel kind of bad to pull off of the top of the library while you're in a Jadzi loop, because you will either have the choice to cast that from the top of the library or just leave it there. If you just leave it there, then your Jadzi loop is done. So you have to do something with that card, whether you find another way to scry it away or if you just wait for something else to draw it and then continue the Jadzi loop. So that's not really preferable because you're spending more resources to just get rid of a counter spell. But if you do cast it for that one mana, you're countering one of your own things probably because they're going to be the only legal targets. So it does kind of feel bad, but just keep in mind that you have already gotten your cast or copy trigger from whatever you're countering on the stack and you're getting value from that even if you don't get the effect of the spell. So speaking of counter spells, we have counter spell, delay, negate, pact of negation, and then two that are really good in this deck, flusterstorm and narciss reversal. Flusterstorm obviously is amazing because you get to copy it for each spell that has been cast this turn by you. And so each of those copies triggers Jadzi. You could just cast this to target one thing of your own, even if you have like 20 copies of this card, and that will trigger Jadzi all of those times and you're just getting a lot of value from that. And then Narset's Reversal is useful for things like Frantic Search that we talked about earlier, as well as being able to reuse a spell and copy it at the same time. So we still get that cast trigger from the original spell, we get a cast trigger from Narset's Reversal, and we get a copy trigger from Narset's Reversal as well. So that's three Jadzi activations while still getting the spell back to our hand so that we can cast it again for a fourth time. And last in our interaction section, we have three spells that are removal spells. We've got Beast Within, Reality Shift, and Pongify. These are really going to help us out to control the board when we have to cast them from our hand. And again, there are more spells to cast off the top. And most likely we're going to have targets for the majority of these unless someone's just board wiped or something. So, All right, we've talked about Storm this entire episode. Let's talk about the Storm and the win cons in this deck. First, obviously we're trying to run out of our deck. We're trying to get through our entire deck and it's not going to be hard with a really high Storm count. Jace Wielder of Mysteries and Thassa's Oracle will help us win as soon as our deck has been depleted. Now, you have to be really careful about how you time this, because Thassa's Oracle, of course, is going to put a trigger on the stack for you to win the game once your library is at a certain amount, and Jace Wielder of Mysteries is just going to have that static effect for when you run out of cards in your deck, but you do have to find a way to draw a card whether it be from another spell or from his ability. So you have to kind of be careful about this. You don't want to cast these spells too early for them to be removed, but you also don't want to cast them too late for you to deck yourself and just lose. The cards that are going to really help us get to that point are Quandrix Apprentice and Archmage Emeritus. Both of these cards have Magecraft, which means they trigger off of every time you cast or copy an instant or sorcery. Quandrix Apprentice will look at the top three cards grab a land from among them, put it into your hand, and then put the rest on the bottom. This weeds out all of the lands that are remaining in your deck that you haven't grabbed yet. Whether you get to put them on the battlefield or not, this helps us wane down the deck quite a lot. And then we have Archmage Emeritus, which will give us a card every time we cast or copy an instant or sorcery, which is just going to go crazy with Jadzi 
and the amount of instants and sorceries we're casting. Okay, now we can talk about the storm cards themselves. I've basically grabbed every single storm card that exists for blue-green. Obviously, blue is a good storm color, but green doesn't have very many options, but it does still have a couple, so this is a really nice mix that we have. The all-star in this deck is Mind's Desire, because first it's a storm spell, so it'll copy itself a whole bunch of times when you cast it, and you get Jadzi triggers for all of those copies, as with all of these storm spells. But additionally, you get to exile a card for each of those copies and the original cast, which means that you can further wane down your deck and get a lot of card advantage, basically doubled from this one card. And you get to cast all of those spells or play those lands this turn for free. So it's even better than Jadzi because you don't even have to pay for those spells. Next, we have Temporal Fissure, which if you want, you can target a whole bunch of your opponent's stuff and basically just take care of all of your threats on the board. You can also just target a single thing if you don't really have a lot of targets or if you don't want to make any enemies, you can just target one of your lands or something like that. And even though they're all fizzle at the end, you get those cast and copy triggers no matter what. Next, we have Chain of Vapor, which is not a storm card, but you can copy it a whole bunch of times by targeting yourself returning a non-land permanent you own to your hand, and then just doing it again by sacrificing a land, you get a whole bunch of copies for doing that. Next we have Brain Freeze, which will mill three cards from a player's library. We can choose ourselves, it doesn't really matter. That will help us progress our library to full milling out. Or if it's more relevant to target someone else, we can do that too. Doesn't really matter, again, it's here for the storm. Next we have Hunting Pack, which will give you a creature token every copy that it makes again mostly just here for that storm ability and casting a whole bunch of storm spells next we have sprouting vines which will put a whole bunch of basic land cards into our hand this will probably clean out our deck with the number of ramp spells we already have in the deck and the number of spells that we're probably casting before casting this but again it's there for the storm and then we have Weather the Storm, which is a newer Storm card that gains us three life with every copy. Again, here for the Storm, we just want to be able to cast and copy a whole bunch of instants and sorceries. All right, the last section before we get to our mana base is just a couple of extra cards that I thought were noteworthy and good enough for the deck, but they don't really fit in any of these categories, or they fit in multiple categories, and it was better to talk about them here. First, we have Wandering Archaic, which has a backside of Explore the Vastlands. This is a popular new card in Strixhaven because it's colorless and it can go in any deck, and the front side is frankly quite insane. Honestly, in my playtesting of this deck, Explore the Vastlands was far more important than Wandering Archaic because it gets us a land and an instant or sorcery from the top into our hand for only three mana. And that's pretty valuable to cast early on, especially if you're looking for ways to propel yourself to the next step to getting your commander out. Of course, if you're playing a uh, high spell slinging meta, this is also good to put on the other side and kind of have as a protection, as well as all of those copies trigger Jadzi as well. So play this card however you want, but I found myself casting Explore the Vastlands more than I did Wandering Archaic. Next, we have Time of Need, which is basically just in here to get Baral. Because one, that is the only legendary card in our deck. But two, having Baral on the battlefield will help us when we have to counter things, but also help us so we can cast things for free off of the top of our library. And I think that's worthy of having just a tutor for it itself. We also have Mystical Tutor and Merchant Scroll. Mystical Tutor will put an instant or sorcery on top of our library, which is really, really cool with Jadzi. Just basically lets us choose one of our storm spells and put it on top. Or Merchant Scroll can put that card into our hand for us to hard cast. Or maybe you just want to find a Mystical Tutor so that you can put it on top of your library and save that mana anyways. I've also included Life from the Loam, which will return land cards from my graveyard to my hand, and it will let us dredge. This will both help us with our self-mill strategy, get more cards into our graveyard so that we can mill ourselves out, and if we need more lands into our hand, if we discard a whole bunch for some reason, and we have an opportunity to play the back half of Jadzi, this is going to be really nice for filling up our hand with land cards. 
And then we have Mystic Confluence, which has a whole bunch of really useful modes. It's an interaction spell, it's a counter spell, and it's a draw spell. Most of the time you're probably going to be casting it and drawing three cards, but it's really flexible and can be used in a lot of different places and different areas for your benefit. Moving on to the mana base, I've kept it really, really simple and you can update this however you want, but really the important thing is that we have an equal amount of forest and island so that we can get at least two islands and two forests or two blue mana and two green mana so that we can cast our commander early on. We don't want to have a ton of just one color. So I put 17 forests and 17 islands in here, a high number of lands, but that's okay because we have a lot of ways of getting lands out of our deck and this is really like a good number to have. And then we also have Teleria West, which has Transmute and it can get us a zero mana card. The things that I'm going to be looking for are either a Lotus Bloom to get us some extra mana or Pact of Negation to get us a counter spell that we can cast for free out of our hand if we need it. And that's going to be it for my deck tech. Thank you so much for listening. If you want to support us directly and help us continue what we do, go on over to Patreon and sign up today. Patreon.com slash Command Valley. We have a lot of sweet perks. We are currently sending out merch to our patrons, sending out spell books, playing lots of games, and we're really having a blast during the spoiler season talking about all of the new cards, brewing up new decks. Really a lot of fun to be on our Discord. Our thanks again to GameGrid for sponsoring this video and all of the videos on our channel. If you shop in the link in the description below, that is an affiliate link and that will help support the channel. So maybe you want some of the new commander decks, maybe you want to buy some Strixhaven packs, maybe you want to buy some singles. Whatever you want, they will ship it straight to you and they will have what you need. Be sure to stay tuned for more live streams. We do some live deck techs every now and then, some live podcasts and we're releasing a lot of gameplay videos right now, so stay tuned for those. Check out our social media, Twitter and Facebook linked below in the description, where we post all of our updates straight to there as well, if you prefer to see us there. As always, thank you for watching, and we will see you next time in the next Deck Tech coming very soon. Stay safe out there.